Hello, Math 8 students. This is Utah Middle School Math Project 9.2F, continuing our discussion on similarity. This is part two of this lesson, since we didn't quite finish it in our last video. So to get started, I want you to discuss with your groups, how do we show two, not two, but two, not that either. How do we show two figures are similar? Students in class have already discussed that, so now they're ready to share with uh, the class on the recording. How do we show that two figures are similar? Seth? Yeah, exactly. We use the definition of similarity, which means that we're going to show that they line up by describing the sequence of rigid transformations and dilations that get them to line up. You don't just say they're the same. You don't just say angles are the same. You have to actually describe the transformations that will take one to the other. If they're similar, that um, the transformations would include a dilation among others, possibly tra uh, rotations, reflections, and translations. So let's, I don't think that we need to review this for the video, and for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip this review. Just remember dilations, keep the angles the same. We need a center of dilation, and we need a scale factor. Um, so we, let's see, what all did we accomplish? I think that was our last problem, right? Nope, we did that one too. And we said that they were not congruent. We even said these ones were congruent because, we, or not congruent, similar, because we described the sequence of transformations twice. Now this is where we left off with number five here. We need to now determine whether these figures are congruent, similar, or neither. Again, I really think just like in our last unit, tracing paper is a really good tool. Um, as you're using the tracing paper, you can kind of determine how does it need to change or reflect or rotate so that we can get at least the angles to match up. And once we get to a certain point like that, then we can decide what that dilation is. Um, so we need to decide, are these congruent, similar, or neither? I'm not going to discuss this one right now on the video. I'm going to pause, give it a try on your own, and then we'll come back together and discuss. Students are working with their groups. Ready, set, go. Only continue on in the video. If you have finished this problem up, we're just going to go over it together. Uh, what conclusion did you come to? Are they congruent, similar, or neither? Tage? They're congruent. Okay, if you're going to say they're congruent, we have to justify it. How do we justify and prove something is congruent? Maverick. Okay, so what you're describing is we need to describe a sequence of transformations, right? And you're describing that first transformation. So if I rotate it 90 degrees, you said which way? We're doing this one. Yeah, let's go, let's go blue to black only because my blue one moves, so I can actually do those. Okay, 90 degrees counterclockwise about the orange. I will do that. Did I write that correct? Counterclockwise, okay. I thought... Counterclockwise. All right, and when I do that, I have it in position right here. 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. Now what? Uh, Gracie, take over from there. Yes, what is a better word instead of move? What should we say instead? Translate how many units you said? Five units. Which direction? Right. And when I do that, I can see that indeed it lines up perfectly. All of the angles match. All of the line segments la match. One landed right on top of the other with these two transformations. Um, who did it a different way? I'm just curious. Okay, Luke, what did you do? Okay. Hold on one second. Let me let me do these things as you're saying them. Oops. Flip up down. So you reflected over the x-axis first. Okay. And what did you call point A? You said you rotated around point A. Um this one? 
the top one, which is not the top one anymore because it's reflected, so it's the bottom one, right? Okay, so that one you're calling A and you rotated it. Great. Which is going to make it land there. All right, continue, Luke. Right, one, two, three, and four. That would also work. Um, extra transformations, it took three for you to do that, but yes, you got it there. So nicely done. Um, let's move on to these other ones. I want you to really pay close attention to uh, number six in the image that you see because the image that you see here is actually very closely related to where we go after similarity. Um, you might remember, maybe not, I don't know if you guys pay any attention at all in Canvas, uh, the unit that we're actually in is called dilations, which we've addressed, similarity, which we've addressed, and slope, which is a new concept. But we're going to address slope from um, a similar triangles sort of exploration. So this image is going to come up again and again and again. So kind of pay attention to what we're doing here. Triangle EGH and LME are indeed similar. We need to prove that they're similar by showing a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, and dilations. So again, just go through that process. I'm going to let you guys do this with six and seven before we come back together and do them on the recording. So six and seven with your groups, and then we'll do them together. Ready, set, go. We're pausing the recording here. Okay, let's start with Siley. Okay, so you went G to M, you said? Okay, how does that t uh, tell us that it's a dilation? So going this way? Okay. This line also extended, and my screen isn't even showing it. I need to extend my own page. And so eventually we can see that those are going to intersect. Great. Yeah, so we know for sure it's a dilation. So what would you say? Because this is a different way than I would have done it, but this is a way that we could do it. So what would you say? How would we show that these are similar? Like, what would we say? Okay, so let's finish this up. Even though, who did it a different way? By raise of hands, who did it a different way than this? Okay, great. We'll go over that different way. But since we've already gotten started on this, let's go a step further. We know that this is a dilation. We even, by extending these lines, we have found the center of dilation. We can't name it because it's not like over four and up three. It's not a coordinate that's uh, labeled. So you would have to give it its own name, maybe Z. So we found the center of dilation. What else do we need in order to describe a dilation? What else do we need? Fits. Uh, not necessarily. So when I'm describing similarity, I have to describe a sequence of transformations. But Siley has found a way that we can go straight to just dilating it. So what do I need to describe a dilation? Let's go back to this slide. I didn't want us to have to review it, but we probably do. It requires a center of dilation. I found it. What else does it require? Scale factor. So we can start just by saying, let me keep on going. This is a dilation. With center, I found it. I labeled it. So I can say with center Z. But that's not all. We also have to say and scale factor and then whatever that scale factor is. How can I find that scale factor? Help me out. How do I find the scale factor? Siley, since you started it, go ahead and finish it up. LM has a length of 2, GE has a length of 4, so it's a scale factor. Yeah, it depends on how we're looking at it, right? Since it listed EGH first, I'm going to assume that e, oh, EGH would be the original. So if I'm going from the original EGH to the smaller one, what would that scale factor be? 1 half. And if I'm going from 2 to 4, that would be scale factor 
of two, yeah, with scale factor, let's say one half since it does list E, G, H first, even though my triangle blue, the one I can move is down here, E, G, H is listed first. So with scale factor of one half, that means this one is the original. Okay, great. Now, most of you did do this a different way. So I'm going to, if I'm starting E, G, H, what is another way that I could do this? This is our alternate option here. Uh, what is another way? I can do this, Hayden. Down how many units? Did you just say two or th three? Down three units, right? Two units. Let me write that down before we go any further. Translate. Nope, down three units. And right, two units. Continue. Good. L is a center, and I know that L is a center because we can see that L, M, and G, which has been moved, are now collinear there. L E and H, which has been moved, are collinear, and they all go back to L, so L is the center of that dilation. So dilate with center L, and scale factor is the same as it was before. That scale factor itself is not going to be changing. Uh, yes, Sam? It does. That is exactly right. And that, like I said, this image is going to show up again and again and again as we continue to look at, remember, what is the name of this unit? Oh, it didn't pull over very nicely. Dilations, yes. Similarity and slope. That's a new concept. We haven't made it there yet. But that slope, you can see very, very clearly in this image. We'll talk about that more in the coming days. So keep that in mind, Sam. Uh, the next one. This one's going to be a little bit harder to describe because we don't have like units. We can't say translate it down two units or translate it to the right three units because we don't have that grid. So we need to practice using different ways that we can describe it instead of always saying the units. So A, B, C, D, E, F, let's make that one be the original. H, G, L, K, J, I is the new one and they are similar. So what sequence of transformations will take me from one to the other? Let's see those hands. Y'all said you wanted to participate. Now prove it. Uh, let's start with Maverick. In between both of them. How, how would I draw in between both? Like, like that. Okay. Line now. Okay. All right. Flip. Left, right, reflect over line. Now that's going to take me to roughly here-ish, right? Okay. Let me write that down before we get any further. Okay. Now what? Good. How do we describe how much we're translating? Move over to the corner. Exactly. So we could, let's name this point. This is E. E has been moved over to here now, right? Maybe we could even call it E prime because technically it's not E, it's a new point. But we can say, let's translate. So E prime moves to J. We could also define a vector. That's not a very good vector. We could also draw a vector that says E to J and translate using that vector. So those are some ways around it. Since we can't say translate at this many units, we can still say translate. So E prime, which we have now labeled, lands on J. Good. Uh, Jaden. Yeah, we. There's lots of ways that we could do this. Yes. 
we're just going to continue on with this one that's already been started. But yes, that is one way that we could do it. Change that line of reflection so that some of the points already match up perfectly. Yeah, that is one option. Let me try and regroup these the right way. I don't want that one. Okay, translated down here. And now what? Who wants to pick up where we left off? All we have left is a translation. That's going to be kind of tough, right? Did you, how are we going to describe the dilation? We know what the center is. Let's start there. We know we're going to dilate with center. Let's call it J. But what is the scale factor? Good, we have a couple of hands. Danielle, what's the scale factor? Great. A little bit more than three. I love that idea. So instead of having to get out a ruler, we're just going to reuse that same uh, tracing paper, the same tools that we've been using, saying, okay, here is this side length here. How many of those do I have? There's one, two, and three. For me, it landed up perfectly at three. Yours was a little bit more than three? Okay. Let's test out another measurement. Let's maybe try this one using my tracing paper saying this is this length. How many of those do I have in this corresponding length? One, two, and three. Yeah, so I think it's pretty safe to say that the scale factor is three. Great job. You can be really precise. You can get out your centimeter ruler and measure the millimeters and then measure the millimeters in the other one and then find that scale factor that way. But I think just reusing that tracing paper as a measuring tool works really well. What questions do you have? Okay, let's finish this up. In the summary, this is the summary is from lesson six of Open Up Resources. Uh, to show that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, we hope oh, two figures are similar if one can be transformed into the other by a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, and dilations. Now, there are many correct sequences of transformations, but we only need to describe one to show two figure, figures are similar. In class, we practice showing multiple ways, mostly because one student sees it a little bit differently than another student. So I want to open your mind and see there's other ways that we can do that. As long as you can find one way to go from one figure to the other, you're done with the problem. It just shows an example here. Again, these triangles are indeed similar. So one way that we can do this is Reflect across line F. So do that reflection first. Then we can rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise around D, and that creates this triangle here. From there, we can dilate using center D and scale factor 2. Another way that we can do that is not demonstrated here with this image, but another way is you could just dilate triangle ABC by a scale factor of 2 using A as a center. So dilate first so that they're the same size and then do the reflection, and then do that rotation. You can do it in a different order. I think sometimes it's better to get it into position to find that center of dilation first, and then it makes it a little bit easier. But there's always going to be multiple ways that we can do them. And now it is time for homework. Your homework is this homework section, 9.2F homework section. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.